Good morning all, it's the video where I open my post. Yes, it's post bag. Right, let's start with this one. Now, if you think you've seen this before, well, you probably haven't because um, I think you've seen the slightly smaller ones. These are the slightly larger ones. So these are seven um, assorted colors, little mini breadboards. And I suppose, understandably, if you can see the numbers along there, you can see that what we've got here are um, 11 strips of five contacts. So we've got 11 different positions where we can, um, different sort of uh, parts of the circuit positions, each one having five contacts. I was rather hoping it would be the other way around, but I suppose that was a forlorn hope really, because uh, these metal pieces are normally stamped out in this, uh, in sets of five. In fact, let's take the back off one of these and just have a look at how they're laid out. Yeah, actually it proved quite difficult to get in under there um, because there's quite a lot of surface area there making contact. But yeah, there are the 11 strips of um, five individual connections. So that's how they're laid out. Um, so let me just reintroduce for a moment the entire family of these micro breadboards. Um, so you've got the large yellow base, you've got the 25 tie point breadboards, um, five strips of five. And then we've got these uh, smaller half size red bases and these just uh, push on there with a friction fit. And uh, yeah, these are the 55 tie point 11 by five. And in fact, that's gonna be quite handy because um, I was playing last night with uh, my little jewel thief which has had all sorts of modifications and circuit changes and I'm trying different voltages on it because um, I may not necessarily want to run this off uh, an AA cell. I might want to run it off a slightly higher voltage. I'll come back to that later on. Um, but yeah, I was kind of running out of space on this uh, 25 tie point. It's fine for the standard jewel thief, but um, with the various enhancements that I'm looking at, I think these bigger ones will be uh, quite handy. Uh, so yes, there they are, seven different colors, the same seven colors, in fact, that the little ones uh, came in. So let's take a look at these on eBay. And they are these seven pieces, mini 55 points breadboard, solderless prototype type point for Arduino. And uh, you get seven pieces here for $2.78 free shipping. And these came from Alice 110-1983. And uh, I think on this occasion, what I'll do is in the description below the video, I'll put links for all four of these items, the two different baseboards and the two different types of breadboard. Right, next we have this one. Let's take a look at what's inside here. I hope it's what I think it is. Yes, it is. It's capacitors. Uh, more specifically, these are super capacitors because you can see there that the spec is 2.7 volts, 10 farads. So let's have a look at one of them. I'll just tear the bag. Um, so these are, well, let's get in a bit closer, shall we? Uh, yeah, so these are CDA brand super capacitors, ROHS, uh, reduction of hazardous substances. These are CXHP series, and there we are, 2.7 volts, 10 farads. And uh, the idea of these is to use them in conjunction with the jewel thieves. Now, of course, if I use uh, supercapacitors, I will be deviating a little bit from the theme of the jewel thief, which is uh, the ability to run a, a blue or a white LED, normally taking 3 point something volts, off a very low voltage down to about 0.6 volts, you can get this to go down to. But I kind of got this idea of having uh, multiple jewel thieves all talking to each other with uh, an LDR on one side and the LED on the other. Incidentally, I don't know whether you've noticed this, but my LED has a capacitor soldered across it and a diode feeding it. What's all that about? But yeah, the idea is to have these things sitting on uh, little supercapacitors. These are very light. I wonder if they're genuine. Well, we'll find out, won't we? Um, and solar panels charging the super caps during the day. Now, during the day, of course, the light will shine on the LDR and that will shut all the uh, jewel thieves off. 
Um, at night, the energy that's been um, accumulated in the super cap will drive the LED, but of course they will talk to each other through the LDRs. And I'll just sort of place them in positions where they can talk to each other in a sort of intelligent digital logic type way. <laughs> Um, and it's going to be kind of a techno art installation. Now, here's another little sneak preview of something I'm doing. Take a look at how this um, LED is connected. It's actually connected across the outside connections of the coil. So it's not connected here across the collector emitter of this transistor. I've actually got it connected across here between the two ends of my transformer and that works nicely. And uh, even if I turn it round and put it in opposite polarity, it still works. It's not as bright, but it still works. And I've actually found because of the way this circuit is oscillating and creating these sort of almost symmetrical spikes, you can put this LED pretty much anywhere. <laughs> you can put it across the primary, across the secondary, if indeed that's what those are, across the two coils, across the Transistor, I think I even put it across that resistor and it lit up. Oh, should we try that? That's there. Yeah, that works. So you can shove that LED pretty much anywhere in this circuit and it lights up. It's great fun playing with this. In fact, what the heck, I can't resist this. Let's charge uh, one of these super caps up and see if it'll actually run that jewel thief. Uh, so what have I got? One volt there. Well, let's take that up to about two and a half, 2.6, that'll do. Um, what's my current limit set to? It's set to, oh, 50 milliamps, that's quite low. Let's go up to 100 milliamps. 130 milliamps, that'll do. Uh, right, let's power it up. And what am I looking at? I'm looking at voltage. Up it goes, very slowly, but then you'd expect that at that low current Oh, I'm going to have to increase the current a bit, aren't I? Um, let's take it up to half an amp. 475 milliamps. Yeah, that'll do. And uh, watch that voltage come up. And then I'm just going to shove it in the Jewel Thief board and see what happens. Right, I've got two volts on that. That's probably enough. Let's turn that off. Uh, did I screw those? Yes, I did screw those screws down. Let's take that out. Put it in the Jewel Thief. Try not to short those legs out. Right, the long leg is too long, so let's cut it down, trying not to um, short the two legs together, because that would probably make quite a crack. Uh, right, which way does this go? Um, I think it's pos to the middle there, neg to there. And uh, yeah, there it is, super cap jewel thief. I wonder how long that would run for. Well, let's find out. I've put it there. Um, okay, let's take a look at these supercapacitors on eBay. And these are they, brand new 2.7 volt, 10 farad supercapacitor, farad, super, ultra, and lots of silly additional words. Um, right, I bought 10, I think, and these are priced individually. So individually, they're $1.16 with a 19 cents shipping charge. So that's one thirty-five, isn't it? And these came from Flying Balloons. Right, next to another one, which is this. Uh, also somewhat related, I think. Um, yes, it's lots and lots of LDRs. Um, yes, yeah, so this is uh, six bags of five pieces per bag, so hence 30. But they're different models. That's called an 06, that's a 49. That's a 37 with a very large 7. That's uh, a 28, a 16, and what's that one? 30 something. So they're all uh, slightly different specs. I think um, the dark resistance, is that the thing that is um, specified? I've got a feeling it is. I can't quite remember. Um, but anyway, this is how it's intended to work. Um, I've got one here. This is actually a smaller one. These are bigger. Yeah, they're much bigger. Let's get a bit closer on that. Uh, yeah, so there's uh, the one that I have been using that I bought ages ago. And these ones are actually slightly bigger. I quite like the bigger ones. But uh, anyway, 
let's put this one in this circuit so it goes across base and emitter of the transistor if I can get that to connect and then the idea is that that turns off the LED when I shine my torch where's my torch uh, right so there's the light the LED on it is getting a bit dimmer now um, okay so let's bring the torch over that quenches the circuit out it doesn't fire up again because there's light coming in from the windows there's a bit of hysteresis on here um, but yeah you can turn the uh, jewel thief off and then when it goes dark the LED comes back on so this means that it's an inverter and you can get one jewel thief uh, LED output to talk to the LDR input of the next jewel thief and uh, create logic circuits and uh, systems based on that right well let's take a look at this set of 30 LDRs on eBay and uh, here they are we have 30 pieces six value um, five each of those six values photoresistor LDR five millimeter so the little ones I've got must be three millimeter or something light dependent resistors um, 30 pieces for three dollars and nine cents free shipping and these come from I chose I love no I choose I is that chose or choose I can't work it out I choose I love um Yes, I had to think about that because the, he's mixed here uh, past tense for chose and present tense for love. Very strange. I chose, I love. Weird name, but there you go. So, um, yes, you've got six different types here. The full names are the 5506, 5516, 5528 and so on. Um, I did look these up at one point, but I can't quite remember where I found the data. But when I come to use these, we'll take a look at the... Uh, different specs of these. I'm pretty sure it's mostly to do with dark resistance, although of course it will also uh, affect the light resistance as well, I would guess. Uh, yeah, that's almost completely gone out now. I think I might have underestimated the uh, size of supercapacitor that I would need. I should have done a calculation really, shouldn't I? Um, half CV squared for the energy in there, and then watt seconds for the energy um, that that will use over a defined period of time. Yeah, could have done that, couldn't I? Of course, the other thing that um, I'm quite keen to do um, when this becomes a supercapacitor, um, you can't really call it a jewel thief because that's not really its purpose, but just a supercapacitor powered uh, switched LDR LED is um, try and somehow achieve um, a relatively constant brightness for this LED over a wide voltage range of the capacitor because of course at constant current a capacitor discharges linearly so the voltage is coming down all the time and I suppose all the um, modules in the system would be reducing brightness at the same time but really it'd be nice if I could somehow and I don't know whether it's possible on this relatively simple circuit um, engineer some sort of constant brightness thing mm, we'll have a play with that Right, let's do one more. Now this one has just come in. I think it's got wires, so I'm gonna cut near the edge. I don't want to damage this. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's lots and lots of lights and wire and LEDs and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure this is what I ordered. It might be actually, um, I can't tell, but it's got one of these controllers and it's mains powered there's a two pin mains plug there which I didn't particularly want but it's possible that um, I don't know this is probably some horrible dropper circuit in there so but I might be able to uh, power this with uh, low voltage which is what I prefer let's just see what it whether it's actually what I wanted which is not a string of LEDs uh, let's unwrap this what I wanted was a kind of wall of LEDs a oh gosh this could very easily get tangled up but um yeah it's supposed to be one of those kind of um diamond shaped mat of LEDs so it's a big flat a one meter by one meter sort of wall of light uh let's see if I can unravel it a bit uh yes oh dear that's got a bit mullered hasn't it in the post um that's all a bit smashed up well at least it will Oh, it came apart rather too easily. Uh, ooh, that's utterly hideous. Four diodes, so are we thinking bridge rectifier? 
I don't even think this is a capacitive dropper. I think this might be something incredibly crude. Of course, it might also be 110 volts, so I don't really think I want to shove that in the mains. But uh, no, there's no capacitor there. There's a little chip that um, and a couple of transistors for driving the LEDs, I presume. Button for selecting patterns, maybe. But that doesn't look like a very comprehensive uh, mains power supply circuit, does it? Yeah, so this is the end of the LEDs. Now, these LEDs have no resistors on them, but every LED other than that, I think, does, because these do. They're quite high value. They're 1.5 uh, red, so that's 1,500, uh, 1.5 K. So, yes, I think these are intended to run off a relatively high voltage. But, yes, if you stretch these out, you can see that they form uh, diamonds if they're not all tangled up. So I'll have to have a go untangling that. But can I power this up not using the mains? Because I definitely think this is probably now meant to run on 110 volts. In fact, I think I can see how this works. Let's close in on that a little bit. I think we've got rectified mains here. So if we say that that's um, AC USA mains, a hundred and something volts um, and that this is the input wire here which comes onto the board but it also goes off on two lines down to the LED matrix there are three other wires here and these are transistors I would presume from that chip uh, signals from that chip are pulling these lines down um, which gives a sort of flashing pattern so I was just wondering whether I could actually put DC on this because it looks like it's immediately rectified. So if I stuck, I don't know, 80 volts DC on this, I wonder if that would work. Uh, well, it looks to me like this, there's a daisy chain facility. I can't imagine that's supposed to plug in there, but I think that takes mains. This then passes that mains on to another set of these things so you can daisy chain them indefinitely. Um, so yeah, I just want to put a high voltage across there really. Right, this boost converter um, goes up to 80 volts. Let's put 80 volts on here and see what happens. Wait for the bang. Uh, well, nothing happens and they don't appear to be lit. So, no, they obviously require more than 80 volts. I wonder if it is 240 volts. Um, OK, this needs further investigation. Um, and it was this item. Um, it's a shame really because this looks quite pretty, doesn't it? And, and I deliberately got the pink one because pink legs are quite unusual. Um, so yes, 96 or 200. I got the 96 LED. Uh, string fairy light net mesh wedding party and all that stuff. Uh, ah, EU plug. Oh, EU plug. Ah, I was looking at that thinking it was a US plug. Of course it's not, is it? It's EU. So they, they probably are. Um, intended to work off 220 to 240 volts. Um, so yeah, pink, 96 lead, 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters. This was $8.62, free shipping, and this came from Crazy Girls 88. Um, yeah, what the heck, let's plug it into this thing, which is a big power booster. It's got a mains 240 volt outlet on it, and uh, see what happens. Right, let's switch on the AC. Oh, they work. Sort of. Oh, yeah, they do work. Actually, that's quite nice. Let's see if I've got different patterns. Yeah. Not sure about pressing that button uninsulated. Let's use my pencil for that. Uh, yeah, static patterns. The image on the listing showed them all lit up simultaneously. I don't know whether they're going to actually offer that because, of course, that's going to draw quite a lot of power through these incredibly thin wires but yeah you get different uh, patterns oh yeah that's quite nice I suppose is that all of them lit up oh, actually yes I think that might be all of them lit up I think that I oh, know that's all of them going through some sort of fade up and fade down sequence but I think when they're faded up they're all lit all 96 of them yeah that's not bad I suppose and so these are today's post bag items, the uh, breadboards, the super caps, the LDRs and these pretty pink LED 
wedding lights. And uh, as usual, a big thanks to uh, those people who support my channel via Patreon. You make being a YouTuber that much easier. Um, if you'd like to become a patron of this channel, then you can click this link here. Another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And uh, this link here will uh, allow you to subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. Cheerio.